Now, colorize, or I'm sorry, poly painting works the exact same way as when we're using these alpha brushes too. So if you have RGB selected, we have right now we have a dot stroke. So we tap L and then we go up here to stroke. Let's go ahead and dock this stroke menu over here to the side and let's take that lazy step way up. So now when we choose a dark gray color and we'll go to alpha here and we'll choose our star alpha. When we drag these out, now we can just drag RGB stars. If you want to sculpt them at the same time, you can hold, you can go here. Let's go ahead and choose a red color. So we can put red stars on here. You can hold down alt and you can punch in. Now that's going to put in uh, the alternate color. If you want to do, you can switch the colors. And then when you hold down alt, it'll punch in red. And you'll notice as we're dragging these out, it's kind of fading out around the sides. That's going to be your focal shift. So change that to negative 100. And now they'll stamp out. Uh, now it is doing an RGB value based on your strength as well as your uh, sculpting. So, you know, if you go light, it's going to be a light value. If you go heavier, it's going to be a darker value. If we switch this from a dot stroke to a drag rect with that alpha, you're going to see we're going to drag out not only the sculpting information, but also the RGB. If we turn off Z add, now we're just going to drag RGB stars. We can change the color. We can drag out new stars in between those. Mix and match whatever you want to do. Freehand, same thing as dot stroke pretty much. Drag dot. These are going to be, let's turn off uh, L so we can turn off our lazy radius. And now we can just drag out the stars here. So you can just drag out the same size stars as based on your brush size. So you make your brush size bigger. That'll drag out bigger stars. You make your brush size smaller. That'll drag out smaller stars. We have uh, spray and color spray. So if we do color spray here, if you hover over these, you can say you can change the color intensity variance and the flow variance and the scale variance and the placement variance. So you can play around with these settings. But essentially what you're doing is you're spraying that alpha onto your object here. You change the color here, now we're spraying green, etc. If you want to sample these colors, what you can do is you can hover over any place in your canvas, then you can hit the C key and that's going to sample what's underneath. So C is in color, so we can sample blue, we can sample green, we can sample kind of this blue green. So just hit C, we can sample a little bit of this red here, and then you can start painting with that color. Let's go ahead and go up here, let's choose a white color. Uh, also under the color menu, if you go to modifiers, there's different ways to select colors if you want. I'm going to go to color, fill object again. And just like with these strokes, if you hold down control and you say go to go back to mask pin, load in a star alpha, you can drag out a star, control tab to invert that, go back to your standard brush, turn your alpha off, go back to a dot stroke, choose an orange color, RGB turned on, and now you can just paint. Let's go ahead and turn our focal shift back to zero here. And now you can just paint through this mask. And you can control drag to unmask. And you can see how that works. You can hold that shift again. We have RGB, so we can blur this out if we want to. So you can use mask, strokes, strokes with alpha, strokes with alpha with RGB. So for example, if we go to alpha 06 and a drag dot and a magenta color, and we'll turn Z add on, we'll turn that intensity up. So now we can drag out pink dots and we'll turn our focal shift down to negative 100 so we get a little bit more defined pink dots here. And if you want to push in with a different color, we can switch this color, choose a green color, switch it back. And now when you hold down Alt, it'll be punched in with the green. Or we can hold down Control. We'll do Alpha 06, drag dot, focal shift to negative 100. And now I can drag out these dots here. I can, oops, I can Control tap to inverse that. If I did want to blur them, I can Control tap that to blur that. Or Control Alt tap to sharpen it up. And then I can go choose a color color, fill object, and now we can just fill those areas with that color. Alternatively, we can fill it with that color and we can go over here to our deformation menu and we can inflate geometry through that color as well. So just another way to get that same result, but this a little bit more interesting control. And of course you can do this on all types of objects. Let's go ahead and grab a sphere real quick, sphere 3D, make it a poly mesh 3D, turn on colorize, and actually, if we turn off colorize and we choose a color, let's say we want to paint the sphere purple, we have RGB turned on, we'll turn Z add off. We'll make that back to a dot stroke with no alpha. Focal shift at zero. Now, if I start painting on this, you're going to see I'm painting purple and there's like a graphical glitch. If you just rotate your camera, you're going to see that's going to get rid of that. And you're going to realize that it just basically turned colorize on. As soon as you started painting, you see colorize turned on for you. And then when you move this, the rest of it snapped into place. And now you see the white default vertices being painted with purple. So if you undo that, we can tap X symmetry. So we can paint an X symmetry here. We can go to transform. We can do X and Y symmetry. We can do X, Y, and Z symmetry. And of course, 
So we can turn on colorize. We can also do like radial symmetry in the Y or back to our flat plane. If we drag that undo slider back, if we go to radial symmetry and let's turn on our floor plane, we need to be in the Z axis. And of course, under transform here, let's go ahead and dock that transform menu. We can crank that radial count up. So now we have 35 and go to a different color. We can lower that down. We can go through here and let's, uh, let's keep lowering that down. We'll go ahead and change that back to a drag dot stroke with our trusty st uh, star alpha. Focal shift down to negative 100. And now we can drag out stars in a radial pattern if we want to. Change the color. So pretty much anything you can do in ZBrush with your brushes on an object, you can do with some sort of RGB value. Now there's some really, really cool stuff we can do with the poly paints. In fact, uh, we will. Uh, but first, before we get into that, let's go out of edit mode, let's hit control N, and let's talk a little bit about alphas and their interaction with textures, because it's been updated in ZBrush 2020. So we're gonna grab out a plain 3D, go into edit mode, we'll go ahead and go to a white color, make poly mesh 3D. We have skin shader for material. And I have my standard brush, I have RGB on, uh, to go ahead and turn that on, and I have Z-Add turned on. I'm going to go into my stroke, and I'm going to tap L to turn my lazy mouse off, or you can just click that button. And let's go to a drag rec stroke, and we'll grab an alpha uh, arrow, and in our texture, we'll just grab texture 15. So what we can do is, we can just drag that out on our canvas. Let's go ahead and hit Control D until we get up to about a million points. Your, your point count will probably be up here. About a million points. And you're going to see while I'm sculpting, uh, let's switch over to, uh, for you guys will be matte cap gray. So while I'm sculpting over here, you're going to see it kind of fades out towards the sides here. That's because I have my uh, my focal shift at zero. Make that negative 100 so you get a nice crisp edge. And now you're going to see uh, we get a nice clean result. So under subtool, I'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, that paintbrush to turn on colorize. And now when I drag this out, you're going to see I'm painting with my texture through my alpha onto my object. And it's being clipped perfectly by that alpha. This was ZBrush's previous functionality, and it's on by default. If you look right up here, you're going to see that A is on. It says it says Paint with Alpha, and a lot of times that's that's really nice to have. In fact, if we go back to our crazy head here, and we switch back to Skin Shader 4, you know, I can just make a an arrow with this. This probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I can turn that texture off and then hold, tap C, and then we can go through here, and now we can, you know, put a little arrow on there. If we just want to poly paint, we can turn off Z Add by going back to our plane here. If we do have a texture loaded, it's going to perfectly be punched out by that alpha. If you don't want that functionality, you can just turn off that A, and now you're going to paint your entire texture, and your alpha is only going to affect your sculpt. So you can see my Z-Add is still working. In fact, if I hold down Alt, you'll see it's kind of punching in. If we turn off our poly paint, you can see that you know this is punching out and this is punching in. But the texture is being painted fully. And you might be thinking, well, you know, why would you want that? This seems like it's a much better deal. You're getting a much cleaner result. Um, we'll bring in another example. So in Substance Painter, you can export these things or using Texture XYZ and ZBrush, you can bring in like skin alphas along with their corresponding textures. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Texture Import. And for the texture, we're gonna bring in Female Elbow Skin. And then we'll also bring in this uh, Mole Base Color. For the Alpha, we'll import Female Elbow Skin. And then Alpha, Import, Mole Height. So in the texture, let's go ahead and start with the female elbow skin, and then for the alpha, we'll go with uh, female elbow skin as well. So we have an alpha with a corresponding texture. You're going to see these two match up perfectly as far as our colors are concerned. So we still have drag rect. Now, if we turn alpha on and we drag this out on our canvas, you're going to be like, okay, yeah, I'm getting um, that skin detail. And in order to kind of blend these together, I kind of like having a little bit of a fuzzier outline. So let's take this focal shift back down to zero, for example. So now you can see I'm dragging on skin and it's making the skin nice and bumpy. If I turn off, let's go ahead and go back to, well, we'll keep it on skin shader four, but you can kind of see, you know, I'm getting that skin texture that I like. And if you want to kind of tone that down, the Z intensity down a little bit, not the RGB, we'll go ahead and keep that at hundred, but the Z intensity, we can turn that down. So it's not quite so heavy. So we'll go ahead and, okay, we're dragging out skin and we're getting nice uh, skin bumps on there. Uh, but you're going to see the alpha, this alpha right here, where it's dark, it's cutting out the RGB information from the texture. Where it's light, it's letting it come through. When you're doing stuff like this, you kind of don't want that. That's not functionality that's uh, really going to help you out. So let's go ahead and undo all that. And let's turn off 
uh, the A button here, and now you're going to see we're getting the nice skin bump detail, and we're also getting the full texture information. Now this fading out that we have is due to our focal shift. Um, that's just the brush focal shift kind of fuzzing out the edges here, which in this case uh, I, I do want. That's not that's not terrible. So we'll go through here, and we'll just kind of go through and drag on our skin detail here. Now again, you can use your uh, Z intensity to go ahead and dictate uh, how intense that is. If I turn off my poly paint, you're going to see um, it's pretty bumpy. I can also go through here and I can, since it's a flat plane, I can scale in the Z and that'll knock down our uh, geometry intensity. So we'll go ahead and turn this back on. Uh, same thing for the mole. If we go in here and we grab a base color mole and then we grab the height, the height information we want to be applied to our geometry, but we don't want it to dictate what color gets applied. We want all of the color and the height, we just want to dictate the Z add. So you can see where turning that alpha off really comes in handy as we're dragging this out. In fact, we can crank that Z intensity up now. And now you can see we're getting a nice big mole kind of popping through our skin and then we're getting the texture around the mole. Of course, um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the this skin tone matches the underlying skin tone if you're gonna be painting in ZBrush, uh, but that's the result you can get. And of course, there's even cooler. You can go in here and grab uh, ins infected or whatever this thing is. And as long as the height matches the texture, you can get some good results. Now these differences in skin tones kind of bothers me and we can kind of fix that, but I'm gonna talk about one more thing before we get there. I'm gonna go out of edit mode, hit control N, and we'll go back into a plain 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. And again, we'll just subdivide this up, up to about a million polygons. I'm gonna bring in another example. So we're gonna to go to texture import. I'm gonna bring in this rope small, and I just have the texture for this. Now, if I try to drag this rope out uh, with standard brush, uh, number one, we gotta go in here and turn on colorize, and it's going to be just drag rex. We're gonna change this back to our dot stroke, and we're going on over here to our stroke modifiers roll, and uh, the rope's going this way, so I need to rotate it. So I'm gonna go in here to texture, rotate, and now the rope will kind of follow the brush strokes. So I can make a really, really cool rope. And I'll go ahead and turn off the Z-Add because I just kind of want to paint this information. Now, I don't want this black being painted around it. I just want to paint the rope. So let's make a quick alpha. I'm going to take this texture. I'm going to say make alpha. So now I have the alpha here. However, when I start painting, I'm still getting black. So we got to say, okay, if I turn on this alpha, now the alpha is going to cut out my rope, which I want. But when I look closely, wherever it gets dark, inside of the texture and I convert it to an alpha. So whenever that alpha gets dark now, it's cutting out my RGB information. I don't want that. So let's go in here to alpha, modify, and I'm gonna crank that intensity up all the way. So I'm basically getting pure white on my alpha now. So now when I compare this stroke, I'm getting all of my RGB information and I'm not getting any black drawn around it. So now I can go through here. So now I've got a nice rope brush and uh, <laughs> if, I, if I knew how to write in uh, cursive anymore, uh, that'd probably look a little bit better. But now you can see how you can play alpha and texture and utilize those for all kinds of different situations uh, within ZBrush.